Hey, second graders. Today we are going to continue with the reading skill of sequence of events. We are going to read a story. We are going to number the events in the order that they happened. So get ready to help me get this done. All right, so when we talk about the sequence of events, remember sequence is the correct order that it happens, and the events are the things that happen in the story. And we're going to look at some of these time order words. You might see words like first and next, which help you organize the story. You might see words like then, and after, those words also help us get the events in the correct order and help us remember the story. Other time order words, you might see right before or right after. And then you see some toward the end. You might see the words finally or at last. So whenever you're reading, look for those time order words. They are very helpful. So today we're going to read this story called The First Day of School. And like I said, we're going to put numbers in front of these events in the order that they happen. We'll put a number one for what happened first, number two for what happened second. But first we have to read the story. We're going to look for those time order words and I'm going to make that a little bigger so you can hopefully see it. So I've got my highlighter ready, and whenever I see one of those time order words, I am going to highlight it. There are not a lot of pictures, just little Frankie up here. So we need to make sure we're visualizing this story, thinking of these events in our head. Here we go. Frankie was excited about his first day in school. The night before, he chose a blue shirt and brown pants to wear and laid them on a chair. I hear the word before, and he did this the night before. I'm going to highlight that. In his backpack, he placed his new pencil box with his markers, crayons, and pencils. Frankie left a note for his mom to make him peanut butter and jelly for lunch. Here's a time order word after brushing his teeth. He set his alarm for 6 o'clock a.m. and climbed into bed. Frankie lay still for an hour wondering about the next day. Finally, there it is, his eyes shut and he fell asleep with a smile on his face. So Frankie did a lot the day before the school happened, the school day started. And then it talked about what happened at night even for him. <clears throat> Excuse me. We found a few time order words the night before, after, and finally. And I tried to visualize these things. But one thing I have to say about Frankie, boy, he is an organized kid. He was very organized with his supplies. He was very responsible by leaving his mom a note for what he should have for lunch. I was excited to read about that, but now I need to think about these events. So we have these events and it's okay to go back into the story to look for them, but let's read them all first. So he placed his pencil box into his backpack. Yes, he did do that. His alarm was set and Frankie climbed into bed. Frankie was excited about his first day of school he laid out his shirt and pants for school. Frankie left a note for his mom to make him lunch. Frankie lay still wondering, then finally fell asleep. So they picked six events from that story. And now we have to decide what out of these six events did he do first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And it's okay to look back up in the story if we need to. That's a wonderful reading strategy, even just to check that we got it right. So here we go. Let's look at these, and I want you to think about with your class, 
Maybe your teacher will stop the video. Maybe your mom or dad, grandma, grandpa at home might stop it and have you talk about what you think happened first. I think he was just so excited about his first day of school. So I'm gonna come back and check. Yep, it's right here. It's one of the first things the story told us. What did he do next? I remember him laying out his shirt and pants and doing his pencil box, being so organized. But what did he do first? Let's go back up into the passage. Well, he chose his clothes to wear. There it is. He laid out his shirt and pants for school. So this happened second. Do you know what happened third? Give you a minute. I hope you said that he placed his pencil box into his backpack. Let's go check. I'm sorry, I keep sliding this up and down, but I want to make sure you can see it. So here he got his shirt and pants out, his backpack. He placed his pencil box. Excellent. So it was after, right after he laid out his clothes, he got his supplies in his backpack. Okay, I still have three more left. Now, sometimes when I work with students, they know which one of these is last. Sometimes our brain helps us remember what happens last. So you might be already knowing which one is last, but let's think about this. So out of our choices, what happened fourth? What happened after he placed his pencil box in his backpack? Did he set his alarm? Did he leave a note? Or did he lay wandering and finally falling asleep? So we're gonna come up here and double check. Here's where he got his backpack all organized. Right there, he left a note for his mom to make him his lunch. I bet that's his favorite lunch. So here's number four. And now out of these two, I think you can even tell me what happened fifth and sixth without looking back in the story. Because if he finally fell asleep, we know that's going to be the last thing that happened. And it makes sense. You set your alarm and then get into bed and then fall asleep. So I don't even need to look back in the story for these last two. This happened fifth and this happened sixth. And I can go back up and check. Yep, right here. He set his alarm and then he was laying still and then he fell asleep. So we did, we put the events in order from first all the way to the sixth event. And we looked back in our story to help us if we needed it. And some of it was just common sense. We knew what was going to happen last. So please continue to think of your stories in the order it happened.